Now, Carl Scambry is the regional media advisor in the Middle East for the Norwegian Refugee Council. He joins us now from Jordan for more. Uh, thanks so much, Carl, for your time for us here at TRT World. So what is happening with those who are fleeing the conflict, with those whose houses have been destroyed? Where do they go? We already know that Gaza is an open-air prison. Indeed, it's it's uh, it's surrounded from everywhere. There's nowhere to go. Nowhere is safe. Uh, a lot of these families are fleeing uh, to schools, to United Nations schools uh, run by UNRWA, the Refugee Agency for Palestinians. But even they come under attack. Uh, they are there are no there's no safe haven inside the Gaza Strip for the over two million civilians over there. Um, uh, I was in touch with with some people this morning who had to flee because their house was under attack, um, 30 meters away from from uh, the the site of an airstrike. Uh, they 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 all relocated to the school with, where there are no services really. These these are normal schools. They're not meant to be to be holding displaced people. But that's that's the the only option that they have right now. Let me also tell you, this morning I woke up to the terrible news uh, of eight children that we work with as the Norwegian Refugee Council. We worked with them throughout the year in helping them deal with trauma, cope with the, the, the nightmares, literal nightmares that they have every day because of the violence they're surrounded with. Eight children wiped out. Uh, for Among the, the 60 or more uh, children killed. Eight of them were, were children we were working with. Uh, I just got to know this morning. Terrible news. Uh, Terrible. Children also under attack who are, who are uh, being targeted in, in all this. A quarter of those killed in these Israeli attacks are children, uh, as we mentioned at the beginning of the program. So why is the international community not doing enough or anything to protect uh, civilian lives, especially those of children? Well, I can't answer on the behalf of the international community. What we've seen over the last two days is the, the uh, American administration blocking attempts by the UN Security Council to even even speak with one voice, to even have a statement about this. And, and that was blocked by the US administration. So it's for them to explain the reasons behind that. What I can say from, from where I stand as a humanitarian is that we've seen this over and over again. We've been through this nightmare, the, these poor Palestinians going through this every few years, going through an escalation. Gaza gets in the news for all these reasons, for these terrible reasons. And then we have to step in to repair the damage done by the Israeli attacks. And this is this is completely unacceptable. It makes absolutely no sense, uh, even for the governments themselves who have been quite generous with the Palestinians in, in, in pumping money to try and rebuild. They need to stop this. They, they, it makes no sense that we have to rebuild Gaza every few years, not to mention the, the, the loss, with the terrible loss of life, which, which is uh, there's nothing we can do about that, including right. children, in, including civilians who, who have, have no say in any of this. Right, and Carl, given the fact that Israel controls all the borders and food access, how do you and other NGOs um, assist people then? What are your main challenges? Well, we are at, at the total... Uh mercy of, of the Israeli authorities. So uh, whatever goes in has to go through Israel, as you rightly said. Egypt also has, has part of the responsibility because it is it has a border with Israel, although the uh, with with Gaza, sorry, with the Gaza Strip, although Israel is the occupying power that is responsible for the siege that is going on. Um, but uh, you know, everything that goes in, any material, even our humanitarian workers who g come from outside of Gaza have to go in through the uh, Israeli uh, system. Um, and that is that is extremely restrictive. But that is, that is not even the issue here. The issue here is that there is a crippling siege, uh, which is the, the order of the day. This, this, this is a daily thing. Uh, now it comes out in these images because the, the supplies are running out, because Palestinians need fuel more than ever. But they they, they are submitted to this life every day. For the last 15 years, they've been living under siege, where all aspects of their life have been under control of the Israeli authorities, be it, be it their freedom of movement, whether they can import cement, whether they can even have violence entering Gaza, uh, because we, we've seen that there, there are lists of things which are allowed and things which are prohibited, including the most the most normal things that every, every everyone should, should be able to enjoy, uh, not to mention being able to travel 
forget about traveling uh, to another country, but uh, traveling to the other part of their own country, in the West Bank, to, to visit Jerusalem. Um, Gazans cannot do that unless, unless Israel allows them, and it allows only very few of them. So we're, we're now seeing the, the, this, this escalation, and, and it, it gets even more dramatic because of, of all the images that we're seeing. But this is their, their daily life, really. Carl, thanks so much for your insight. I really appreciate that. Um, Carl Skembri, he's the regional media advisor in the Middle East for the Norwegian Refugee Council. He was joining us from Amman in Jordan. Thanks again, Carl.